Hi, this is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and I just thought I'd make a quick video about kind of the craziness that is going on in the comic market today. Stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. Now, I've, I've never really done a video uh, like this before, but I, I've just, I've noticed that prices have really been kind of going a little crazy in comic books recently. And like I've mentioned in some prior videos, I watch a lot of auctions, auction houses, eBay, Instagram, all this kind of stuff. And so I, I see a lot of these prices. I'm, I'm very aware of the market and I thought that I could comment on it and maybe provide something that was that was useful. And what, I, what I've really just, and I think a lot of collectors have seen is that the prices are just increasing faster than they ever have in the past. And you know, some some examples that that I have that uh, fr from sales, I think just from the, I think these are all just from the last week, was there was a Ultimate fall Fallout 4 one in 25 variant sold for twenty thousand one hundred and fifty dollars in a 9.8. I'll plug the picture of that one in up here, and that was a twenty six hundred dollar book a year ago. So I mean nine, 10 times the value in, in a year. Then we've got a giant size X-Men one, which I, actually I have a copy of this one. So I'll, unfortunately mine's super low grade. So, I mean, it looks nice, but I wish I had a <laughs> higher grade one now. Um, but a 9.8 sold for $40,500 this week uh, versus about 10 to $12,000 a year ago. Um, then an X-Men one in just a, a CGC 1.5, sold for $7,800 this week versus about $3,000 to $3,500 a year ago. And then the, uh, the last one, which is also a book I have, is Famous Funnies number 212, which I showed in a relatively recent unboxing. And this one in a 6.0 sold for $3,360 uh, versus $885 a year ago. Now, the reason I picked these four books was that it covers all ages. The Ultimate Fallout 4 is modern. Giant Size X-Men 1 is a Bronze Age book. Uh, X-Men 1 is a Silver Age key, and Famous Funnies uh, 212 is a Golden Age book. You know, it's a sci-fi book. And and so I, I wanted to show that, that this is happening across all all ages. And so uh, it's really something that seems to be the entire market, or at least keys uh, keys within the entire market. It's not just you know, one hot little spec book here and there. And so I've been trying to think about what might be causing this. And, you know, I, I talk with various people about this. I talk with my brother about this a lot, you know, trying to figure out what's causing these changes. And I, I, I've had a few different theories. I've watched, you know, various other channels. And, you know, and if I, and if I bring up things that, that other people have talked about on other channels, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to steal content from anyone. I, I just, I can't watch it, everything that's out there. So I don't know what everybody's done videos on. Um, but the first thing I've, I would think about is the pandemic, because that's something that's been a big change in the last year. Uh, and so what from that might be driving this? And one part of it is that I've heard ETA Nick talk about in the past was that there's been a massive increase in CGC submissions for modern books. And so it could be people that are uh, trying to make ends meet right now or see that there's money in comics and they're trying to flip modern books that you can buy at. If you can get a 9.8, you can buy it at the... Uh, at the shop for three, four bucks, you can get it graded for 20 bucks and sell it for a hundred bucks. You know, that's, that's money there that, that you can then use to pay bills and, and all that kind of thing. So that, that's one possibility. Uh, there's uh, people that have extra money now from, from working from home. There, there's, if you're not commuting in, you're not going into work, you're not, uh, you're not traveling, you're not going on trips, you know, for, like me, I, I talk about, I, well, you can tell I'm a, I'm a big snowboarder. I'm not doing any snowboarding trips this year. So there's money that I can spend on comics. Um, you know, I'm not going out to eat when I, you know, that kind of thing. That's money that I can spend on comics. And so there, there's potentially money that's moving from one area that maybe people often spend money in their lives into something else, you know, like collectibles, that kind of thing. Uh, another thing that I've heard is that, you know, it's the comic market has, has aged. And so it's older collectors now. and they have more money, free money available to spend on things that we wanted when we were kids, you know, like, like these different books. And 
I think that that's maybe part of it, but that's been true for a while. Uh, that, that's not something that's new this year, you know, that's, that's driving that right now. And so I, I don't think that's really something that's, that's a big, that, that is the, the real big reason behind this. Um, then, you know, there's, all, there's always kind of the movie, TV show hype, you know, like the, the Mandalorian with Star Wars and WandaVision with all the books that are going crazy around, around that show. Um, but that, that's again, that's something that's always been relatively true. You know, when people know about characters, uh, you see these changes in price, these spikes in price. Uh, one of the channels, uh, Comically Correct, I think it's Comically Correct Comics, uh, he, he did a video recently on when to uh, buy and sell your keys, you know, based on news around movies. And so he, he had some, some cool information that he showed about that. And that shows that that kind of trend's been around for a while. That's, that's not something that's brand new this year. So what I, I had a conversation with someone recently that purchased, uh, actually just a couple days ago, somebody that purchased some books from me. And if they're watching this, you know, hey, welcome to the channel. Uh, <laughs> I purchased some books from me. And they, uh, that really made me think that, that this is probably the biggest driving factor in this right now. And this is someone who was a card collector and seller. And, and so uh, largely this was basketball cards is what he was talking about. And he, he made a comment to me, he said, you'd be crazy right now to buy Kobe Bryant cards. They are just so expensive. And so I'm looking to get into, you know, another type of market. And so he's looking to get into comics. And I keep thinking that, it, that it's new entrants into the market that have been driving this because I just, I don't see the amount of money that's going into this market right now coming from the existing pool of collectors. And so I, I felt that there was, there is this external money that's coming in and, and, you know, new, new collectors or new, you know, whether it's flippers or investors or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that conversation really kind of made that feel real to me. I know other people have mentioned it in the past uh, or, or recently, but, but that really made it feel real. And I, I think kind of like the canary in the coal mine was the Marvel cards. You know, when we started seeing Deadpool cards, you know, in a PSA 10 selling for thousands of dollars. And now all the, the hype around these, you know, foil cards from, from Marvel from the 90s and and all of that, I think that was kind of the initial inform, you know, thing that showed that it's that card collectors are, are starting to get into this market. So now, for for people that are that are in that area, that are maybe in the cards market, that are looking to get into comics, just you know, be aware that it is a different industry. Uh, there there are things that you need you could you could make mistakes on that you could potentially lose a lot of money. It's not something. Don't approach it where this is just, I can buy this thing and it's gonna go up and I can sell it for more money right away. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes that you can make. Um, you know, there are understanding things like the different types of labels that are on CBC cases, for example, universal versus restored versus qualified versus signature series versus pedigree. And then within restored, there's all kinds of levels of restored that, that make things worth more or less. And so if you're new into comics, I would largely just stick with Universal. Uh, it gives you something where you have a grade on it that makes it so you can, you can find an established value for those books. Uh, it gets much more complicated when you start talking about those other, those other types of labels. Also things like newsstand versus direct edition. It, you know, if you don't understand that the reason this book sold for 50% more than this other book in the same grade is because one was a newsstand and one was a direct, you can make some very, very expensive mistakes. And so just be careful, you know, if, if you're new getting into this, it's not necessarily just as simple as, you know, buying and selling something and, you know, flipping it for more money. You know, you can make, you can definitely make some mistakes. Uh, now, I, I, I don't think that this is a bad thing for the hobby. I mean, I know that there are people that are upset about it because they see the prices of the books that they want to collect go up. And, and that's, that's always a struggle because, you know, people save and everything to try to find, to get key books that they've been trying to get. And then they, they kind of keep moving up and, and getting out of reach. But one of the ways that I look at this is that a year ago, it was just straight doom and gloom in, in the comic industry, in the comic market. Everybody's saying, you know, DC gonna, gonna, is dead, Marvel's dead, movies are dead, everything like that. And now we're having record-breaking interest in comics. And now I know like it could be that 
uh, people are concerned that these aren't people who are you know really interested in comics or, or whatever but I mean the way I look at it anybody that starts getting into this that can become someone that is really interested in in these books and I, I mean for me I got back into comics pretty seriously about I think like three years ago and it started off where I was just like I'm just gonna buy a couple books you know things that I didn't have when I was a kid and I'll, I'm gonna just hold on to them and and obviously <laughs> that has changed you know I, I buy and sell a lot of books and it's you know and, and I, I love the books that I get you know I, I love getting these you know these key issues and these first appearance characters and uh, our first appearances of characters and, and all this kind of stuff I just I love it it's fun I like displaying it I like having them and and I like I enjoy selling them to other people I love finding them and it, just everything about it and so just because somebody comes into it from another industry you know from another collectible doesn't make that something that's not real um, and I know people are upset about prices going up, but that's one of the challenges with collectibles like this, especially older collectibles, is that there is a limited supply of them. There are not going to ever be more of them made. And so if there's new money and new interest coming into it, there's now more demand and that is going to drive up the prices. And, and I think that's really what we're seeing. Now the question is, are these going to be you know, sustainable long term? Who knows? I, I mean, nobody can really predict that. Uh, now I've, I've heard other people talk about price memory in collectibles and that kind of thing, and, and that, that there's, that's pro there's probably a lot of truth to that. And so even if the prices do come down some, uh, they likely will still at least retain some of that elevated level. So with with price memory, one of the books I like to use as an example is Eternals Number One, and so that book was largely worthless <laughs> before the Eternals movies came out. You know, probably a couple hundred bucks for a nine eight, and then it got announced. Uh, then we had, you know, I think it was at San Diego Comic-Con, we had all the actors come up on stage, and that book spiked up to around $2,000. Uh, but then, when there wasn't any news for a while, that book came back down pretty hard, down to around $800 to $900 for a 9.8. And so, while that was a big drop in that price, it was still multiple times higher than what it was in the prior to, to those announcements and prior to that additional interest. So, so yes, you, you, you can definitely expect, it, or there is the potential to see, you know, drops in prices and, and those kinds of things, but price memory can, can definitely be a, be a real thing. Now, the other thing I thought I'd talk about is, you know, what, what am I doing because of this? Like, what changes am I making? How am I reacting to, to this market today? And for me, I've really kind of Put a, a hold on selling it, anything that I consider like a major key. And the reason is that I would sell a book and then a month later it's going for 25 or 50 percent more. You know, I, I had a bunch of these, uh, the Star Wars books. I had I had two nine sixes of Star Wars 42, uh, so the first Boba Fett in comics. I had uh, a nine six of Star Wars. Um, uh, number one, a nine two of Star Wars number one, a couple eight fives, and I, I had sold them all, and they are now going for 100, 200 percent more than what they they are they were when I sold them, you know, and, and so that's why I'm, I'm just like anything that's major key, I'm putting a hold on because the prices are just going up more than what than anything I could do if I'm buying and trying to resell a book just kind of normally. And so I, I'm just, I'm, I'm holding on. So that, that's what I'm doing. And now when I talk about uh, major keys, I just, you know, kind of show some of the books I have. The, the types of things that I'm talking about are, you know, things like big first appearances or big events within books. So, you know, like X-Men uh, number 101, which is the first appearance of Phoenix, um, Marvel Spotlight number five, first appearance of Ghost Rider, Amazing Spider-Man number 129, first appearance of Punisher, and then one that is very relevant right now, uh, X-Men number four, which is the, the first appearance of uh, Scarlet Witch and, uh, and Quicksilver. And I have, I, had, I have a 4-0 as well, and I had another 4-0 that I sold back in October for 1200 bucks, which at the time was $400 more than the prior high for that book. The prior high had been about 800. That 4.0 is now going for around 25 or 2600. So that, that's what I'm talking about with these just huge price increases over very short periods of time and why I'm 
holding off on selling things that I consider major keys right now. Uh, now the last thing is, you know, everybody wants to know, is this a bubble that's going to pop? When's it going to end? That kind of thing. And it is a, a fool's errand <laughs> trying, trying to guess when, when that type of change is going to happen. When this is, is it going to end? Is it going to keep going up? Who knows? However, you know, I'll always, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to make a, a prediction or have a theory on things. And um, my theory has been that this, a lot of this really is driven by the pandemic. You know, even the, even the new collectors coming into the market, because the cards market, I think, was also, the spike in prices is also largely driven by the pandemic and this additional money that's available to spend on these things. And so I think that we may start seeing either a leveling off or that's when you start to get the, the kind of the pullback is when things really start to turn back to normal uh, in kind of around, whether it's just the United States or the globe or whatever it is. And, you know, we're not, we're definitely not there yet. You know, people are starting to get, you know, vaccinated getting their shots and a little more travel is starting to happen. But there's a lot of people that need to be <laughs> vaccinated and uh, it, before things can really, I think, to return to normal. And with all the variants of, of, of uh, coronavirus and all that, I mean, who knows when exactly that's going to happen. So guessing when that might happen is, you know, who knows? Is it going to be a year? Is it going to be six months? I, I have no idea. But I think that is one of the kind of like events that's going to start to bring things a little more back to normal. But, you know, this was, this was my thoughts on it. I, I thought that uh, having that conversation with, with the individual that, that was in the cards market that's getting into this was really eye-opening for me uh, because I, I know I'd heard that mentioned, but I, I hadn't really thought about it that much. And hearing it directly from someone who was in that market getting into comics you know uh it, it's it made it it made it definitely more real hope you enjoyed this uh, if you did please hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this if you're new to comics you know if this is something that you're now starting to try to get into like i like i talked about with people from the cards market you know subscribe to the channel i show a lot of different key issues that that i pick up uh, I also occasionally talk about other aspects of the hobby that, you know, may be useful. So thanks again for watching. I'll film some more videos when I have some new thoughts on, the, on comics to talk about or I, I get some more books in to film some unboxings. Thanks again.